testing the microphone right quick uh, to make sure uh, everything's straight before we start this meeting. I've sent the email out, I'm sorry, the EDSB message out to all students that are connected to uh, the Camelot Network and EDSBE. Um, let me see here. Let me share my screen. The meeting is supposed to start at 1 p.m. or 1300 hours. All right, so hopefully it's the screen is shared and um, when students come in, they come in, this uh, meeting has been posted in ESB, um across all classrooms. Moving forward, students in credit recovery will not have to worry about credit recovery <clears throat> due to a state man mandate made by uh, the ISB, which is a licensing system for teachers. Um, currently, I will only be covering material for the four classes instead of five classes that I teach. Uh, resolutions and uh, corrections. Uh, I should have checked the video. Uh, the sound is good. Okay, I can see it on the meter. Um, resolutions towards the work you've done since I got that update from the principal or slash executive director will uh, count towards credit. Uh, in your current classes. So don't think that, uh, I'm being proactive, don't think that the, the credit recovery class, uh, all the work was done for not. So uh, you might see your scores increase a bit. I just got this update from Mr. Banky and um, had a staff meeting. So uh, if you got questions about what's gonna happen as far as your credit recovery classes, do know that the state of Illinois has uh, changed it where um, I'm gonna just take the uh, the work you've done and supplement it into your current scores so we can get you further along your path. But uh, hopefully right now, I'm gonna review this video um, later for quality control purposes. Uh, you should see what I have on the screen. Now today's assignment is based on work and energy. <clears throat> We talked about work and energy. Let me check this microphone and be sure it is great. We we talked about work and energy in terms of the summation of masses. Uh, work is equal to force times distance. And if you're not aware of that, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna need you to review other videos or if you need me to send that video to you so you can review it for your edification, I can because I've been archiving all the videos. I'm gonna send them back out to you guys as necessary. But um, if you want me to go through, <clears throat> because the staff meeting ran kind of late, um, how to uh, establish a Google document, how to submit, I can do a separate uh, Zoom meeting. I have a personal Zoom meeting um, set up for that. And I can give you one-on-one -on -one instruction or this it's really not one on one, it's it's more one on virtual. I log in, you log in and we um talk about the problem in, in greater detail. For all instructional purposes, um most of the assignments will be enrichment. So I will be um I know students can be like the same problems in this room that I seen in Esby. Until we get student participation up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be po cross posting the same assignment. So I can get all students involved or engaged in the physics problem because during this time of COVID-19 and um, everything being shut down, it's gonna be kind of difficult to uh, separate the instructional material across all classrooms or all periods. Um, the only thing that I'll be covering is material in terms of periods three, four, five, and six. So that will be physics third period, physics fourth period, robotics uh, fifth period, and um, uh, computer science uh, for sixth period. So uh, currently you should see what I'm showing on the screen. And uh, the problem set is based on work and energy, as I said, but the problem set, because some students have posted the wrong assignments in uh, different classrooms will be based on uh, work and energy, as I said, but the problem itself and this example from your physics books 
um, you know, how your Facebook, some me trying to go in, in a certain amount of detail over your gravity escape system. So give me one moment. I'm going to pause the recording while I get established and also give the students time. Um, I'm going to say we're going to get up and running around about uh, 13, 15 or 1, 15. Okay. So I'm gonna just going to wait. If you come in, please make it known. Uh, this is a recording to establish the norms. If you come into the classroom, please keep it clean. Please keep it professional. Please just stay focused on the material. Questions in terms of, as I've seen, of what's my transcripts look like? Where are my um, report cards? Uh, those are questions I'm trying to tell you, please direct towards Mr. Banky, Mr. Patton, or even Mr. Funes, our, our student services director. But this is for the purpose of wholesome instruction and the benefit of edification to develop self-efficacy. So I'm gonna pause this for a moment and then we'll get started momentarily. I'm gonna make this announcement again. We're gonna wait till 13, 15. Uh, that's about three more minutes approximately because uh, a few students have reached out to me and I'm making this announcement again because it wasn't currently recording. Uh, it's not gonna start recording until uh, I think it's time to start the problem so I can process it and send it out to all students. Okay, so uh, I tried to wait and maybe some students will come in, but uh, let's get started on this program, uh, this problem here uh, that I cross uh, posted in all classrooms just to get you guys started on the reporting process necessary to gain ideal credit in all assignments for me. Um, as I stated before, uh, the rigor is going to increase, the assignments are going to change. But for right now, I'm just getting you through the process of trying to understand how to submit assignments for full credit, okay? So please follow the same procedure I do. This is a recording, and this recording will be uh, downloaded and reestablished or converted to YouTube for better viewing. So let's jump right into it. <clears throat> You're going to start off in your ESB portal. And... Inside of here, in all classrooms, you will see the Zoom meeting, and this will change because around one o'clock on Mondays, and all the teachers and myself have discussed it, you will be able to uh, log into each room and get uh, your instruction uh, accordingly. This also counts for your GCI classes moving forward. So this problem is uh, for today, April 30th, and um, I posted it a little earlier, because uh, we had some meetings. But now um, you're gonna go to your portal and basically you would copy this problem. So after you copy the problem, you're gonna establish a new Google Doc. Let me start from the beginning. I was trying to you know, squeeze in some picture the problem and do some actual uh, drawings for free body diagram understanding and physics, but we don't have a lot of time. So open a new tab, wherever it may be, and you click on this icon that says Google Apps in the corner here, all right? It's the nine boxes next to your uh, unique picture or identifier, and I click on Documents. Now, if you have a cps.edu account from your previous school, or you have a personal Gmail account, this should be accessible for you to begin generating reports. So what do we start with? Well, we gotta go back to the original problem. So give me a second, I'm gonna do that for you. Sorry about that, I was having technical difficulties. All right, so let's look at this problem. Uh, 
I already went ahead and copied the problem from Edsby into your Google document. So again, in the beginning, I, I told you for procedure purposes, <clears throat> you wanna type the title of the document you're working on so you can find it and retrieve it for submittal later on. And I showed this to Ms. Ray, Ms. Ms. Hudson, and various other students who are notable on how to submit this to ESBY. You have to, after you establish a title, click on file, go to download, and then click on PDF. All right, so, but let me go through the parameters for just getting the document started. And at the very end, I'll show that procedure yet again. So one second, I'm gonna mute myself. All right, so what you need to start off with is, of course, the title of your document. So today's document is, we're going to call it, I'm not even clicked on it. There we go. Call it do now. And it's going to be uh, today's date. I do this just so I can identify where it is in my computer. And today is the, is a, I'm sorry, the 30th of April, 2020. All right, you hit enter and it saves automatically. If you notice here, this is why I use Google as opposed to Word or Microsoft Word is because this is very virtual. And even you type on here, you, you create or here, it'll automatically save. So let's go further. We are looking at our document now. I already put the problem in for you and you wanna type your first and last name. This is your header portion. For every document, you can't just send me a direct message or a quick message to do the assignment. Or you, you can't even just send, and I try to make this complicated, but when society opens back up and everything, this will distinguish you from being a professional and an amateur making very, very uh, concise and detailed reports. So uh, I start off with my name. You're not gonna put my name. You're gonna put actually your name there. I'm just giving you the example and format of how to type up your report. The next thing you're going to type up, of course, is your date. So today is the 30th. And then you're like, we typed that already. But yeah, I'm sorry. I will take off points if I don't see that. Because this is showing that you can follow directions. All right. So, of course, we, we named our document. We're giving our document a header. And now we're going into the problem. The last part of your header, of course, is what period you're in. So I'm going to say period. Um, I don't know, third. And this is your physics. It'd be nice if you could label that, because I read through all of them, and if your work is sloppy, I will take off credit. Okay, so this is the current problem for today. I'll read it out to you. In a gravity escape system, an enclosed lifeboat on a large ship is deployed by letting it slide down a ramp and then continue in a free fall. That's where you're falling just straight down due to gravity uh, to the water below. Suppose a 5,782 kilogram lifeboat, excuse me, slides a distance of 15.2 meters on a ramp that makes an angle, and this is gonna be our theta throughout the uh, whole calculation. I'm working on your algebra, your arithmetic, uh, your reporting skills as far as research, and currently trigonometry. So we're getting into the realm of physics where you use angles. Now I was gonna try to make a picture to problem diagram but for the sake of time, grading papers and all these other administrative tasks that I have, you know, put upon my shoulders, we're just going to go through the problem. If you have questions, I have a personal Zoom meeting that I'll share out to students who ask that question in ESB via messaging. And, and also, please stop reaching out to me on Facebook. I, I try to post what I can on Facebook because I know some of you out there are watching and it gets student participation involved. But... Uh, I've been informed that we cannot do that. It will get you in trouble and it will get me in trouble. So just from here on out, reach out to ESB. I have it attached to my cell phone. A lot of you guys, um, let me pull it up for you real quick. I don't know if you can see my screen. A lot of you guys, actually, if you download the ESB app, which has a little TV, I don't know if you can see that. I turn it, see the, the green screen is screwing me up. But it has a nice little TV head and you download that. And if you have it on your phone or, you know, with this iPhone, 
I'm not sure Android has this one team iPhone, but it will allow you to immediately see when any of your teachers, including myself, post something. So let's jump right into it, okay? I just wanted to make that note clear because moving forward with everything going on in the world, uh, I don't want you having to come to a meeting it's because you didn't follow a procedure or process that all of the staff have to follow as well. So the problem starts off with the same understanding we had from yesterday and the day before what I do now. So you have to at least begin with what equation am I going to use? So let me see if I can pull it up for you guys real quick, just to, you know, alleviate some of the time needed to retype all this stuff. So let me go to my drive real quick. And I know we did this and I'm not, yeah, I'm purposely not sharing the please, a few a student asks, can you just share what you did? No, because that's going to make it where you just copy and paste the work. I'm like, I'm done. Look, <laughs> I'm born and raised Chicago. The time for finesse is not right now. So I'm not sharing these documents. Please stop asking, but I do have access to all of them in case you need to review them in video form and I'll talk you through, through them, but you have to begin because I'm, I'm working on your typing skills. Your reading skills are sometimes called literacy and education, as well as your critical thinking and STEM skills. It's a lot. So, uh, you know, I got to stamp my name on your grade. I got to make sure you know what you know. Uh, let's go to uh, yesterday's do, do, do now because I'm progressing. I'm sorry, one second. My phone scams. I don't answer scams. So, if, I don't know if you can see my screen. I hope you can. But this is a problem from yesterday. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this same concept and go slowly. because We got a lot, a lot of things going on in life, and uh, I don't want to move too fast, as I've been told I can do. And this is the concept from yesterday, where work is equivalent to the force multiplied by the distance. Again, if you see my screen, and we're building off the topic, I think um, by next week we're going to go into forces. And then after that week, we're going to scale back up into it. I, I wanted to do it this way because I wanted to get people motivated to do work for us. Let's do some work. Let's see what's under the hood of that mind and get us started. So let's recall, force is equal to the mass times acceleration. This is Newton's, uh, I think, second law. <coughs> um, so with that said, review the previous videos uh, because I think the video before this video, I broke you into or I walked you into how work functions in terms of physics. So work is equivalent to force times distance, but these problems are unique. And sometimes you have to use on Thursdays, I give you guys uh, next tomorrow, substitution method. And in substitution method, I am teaching you the basics of taking one equation, solving it, and substituting it back into another equation or superpositioning it back into another equation to get further understanding of where that equation is going. Your phones, your calculators, your, all your computers, almost all devices we use <coughs> to make our lives easier are based on this, these techniques I'm teaching in physics. You gotta understand that the first inception of the worldwide internet was started in CERN, a place I worked at in Switzerland for a while. And it has lots and loads. I can't even begin to tell you how many algorithms involved. And, and furthermore, if we can keep these Zoom meetings going, I'm trying to push to more rigorous, more developed topics like web design for entrepreneurial skills or even app development. And I have friends that do that, but I'm going to teach the basics for the computer science students in sixth period, how to develop that out on the internet. So you can work from home, create certain applications that allow for your customers or client base to uh, function successfully in society. So give me one moment. All right, so let's jump into it. We need to establish Again, and I use this procedure every time in computer science, physics, robotics, what is your known and unknown values? So let me clean this up for you real quick. So known values are what? And then we're gonna come over a few because we have also our unknown values. 
what did the problem give us? And I keep going through this with my mentor, Dr. Mel Sabella from Chicago State University. He taught me this well, and it helped me get through physics because it's a lot of material that you get easily confused if you don't follow, as engineers use, a systematic approach to uh, going each iteration through a problem. You will see this in high school, you'll see this in college, you'll see this in the military. There is a routine procedure that develops muscle memory. So at the forefront of most of my physics-based problems, I'll say that, establish your known and unknowns. So what do we have in a problem? That's our knowns, right? We know that, going back to the problem, we have a certain amount of mass. Okay, now I, again, review, how did I know that was mass? Review the prior videos. And if you need me to show, send you those videos, I can. So that's 5,782 uh, kilograms, right? And that's going to be our mass. It's only the only, only mass we got, so I'm gonna say mass. Not mass one or two like we did yesterday, but just mass. And that's 5,782 kilograms. What else does the problem give us? All right, let's go back up to the problem. Let's reread the problem. This is the critical thinking process. Go back, read. As my one of my main mentors in martial artists said when I was trying to learn new techniques in fighting or even in physics or calculus or quantum mechanics, go back to the problem, read it three times before you answer. Even the nobles told me that. So what do we got? Distance, right? I don't know if you can see here, but that's distance, All right? So that will be the D in our calculation, or if you see here, our distance. So distance, and I, I don't want to use D and A and M because, I mean, in, in, in college you can, but you when you're in high school, you want to be clear about what you're saying. So I'm trying to write it out. But if you write D, I'll understand what it means, and I'll take it into consideration that you knew the procedure and the steps to get the calculation correct. Uh, physics, I have to stress this, builds into architecture. It builds into aerospace. It builds into chemistry. You have your chemical engineers who make the foods you like to eat. So following these procedures, while they may seem, I don't know, uh, meticulous, uh, doing too much as a student has told me, or doing the moles, yeah, no cap. <laughs> I'm from Chicago, so I understand y'all talk. This is what you have to do to get the actual cre uh, credit. And if you cut corners, I keep saying this, I keep stressing it, you will get what you get. You get what you earn. So distance here is equal to 15.2 meters. Next, they give us a strange new variable or a strange uh, known if you're not familiar with trigonometry. And that's called theta or the angle. Theta is the Greek name for a weird symbol that most students don't like. And when I write it on the whiteboard, it looks like, let me see if I can pull it up for you guys. So theta looks like that. Right? Now I've talked about this from some students that had me in physics three um, and, and, and robotics even, because we talk about rotations of the wheel computer science because you still have to talk about rotations of the wheel when you're talking about which angle you want to turn uh, your avatar or sprite and uh, scratch. So uh, theta is usually, it looks like this when you write it out by hand, but for the purposes of you typing reports, you can just write theta. But if you're writing it out, I'll give you extra credit for actually writing the symbol theta equals, like I will go through, okay? So let's go back to this. I want to clarify that. Because if you look it up, I don't want you getting confused and be like, what is he, what is he talking about? This is the wrong document. Here we go. So theta one, let's just say theta because we don't have multiple angles like in our electromagnetic uh, induction uh, problem set. So theta is equivalent to our 68.2 degrees. Okay. Now we have an unknown value. And what is that? Well, if you look at the question here, it says, how much what? How much gravity? I mean, sorry, how much work does gravity do on the boat, right? So gravity is already mixed in there with your forces. And theta is a new element we have to discuss in terms of how our work calculation changes. So let me come here. 
we have one more form of the force equation to consider. That is going to be force is equivalent to the mass, not force, I'm sorry, work. I got ahead of myself because I was thinking about gravity, and that's a force calculation if you ever want to do it. You want to see ever how ever see how fast you're falling from a plane that you jump out of with hopefully a parachute. You just do this calculation and do the algebra for the acceleration going down. I'm sorry, not the acceleration, during the force going down, because you have to use your mass times the acceleration, which is actually 9.81 meters per second squared here on Earth. Because on Mars, it'll be a fraction of that, it'll change. So that's why you see astronauts when they jump, they don't go as high as they would on Earth. But with all that said, work changes here because we now have an angle to use or a theta to use. <clears throat> so that's gonna be force. And it's going to be multiplied by the distance, which is also multiplied by a dimensionless number, which is our degrees. And we use a form of mathematical cal calculation called cosine. So I'm doing a bit much, but hold on. Cosine and then the angle is what cosine will work on. So uh, we're going to say theta because I know it's going to be tough for you guys to see theta in your listing of symbols. I tested out this morning. Uh, to click theta and figure out where it is, all right? So knowing that, we need to find our work, which is equal to some number, because remember, that cosine function is just going to be a dimensionless number. It's going to be like 5, 6, 78, whatever. And um, it's usually in a, a Cartesian grid system from uh, 0 to 420, 720, whatever you're doing if you're doing high-level mathematics. All right, so but... When you're making these calculations, another note, and it's only use Google Calculator, because sometimes Symbolab will give you radians. Um, Google usually gives degrees in terms of the calculations. So uh, I want to go through this procedure so it's not overwhelming to you. Like, what is he sending me on Ezzy? What is he doing? So work is going to be equal to some number, that's a question mark, in joules. We're still using that term joules because we're still in the work section. All right. So now that we have uh, our calculation, and I wonder if I can find this calculation, but I'm not going to. I, c I can actually pull it up. Um, so if you want to look it up for your own edification, this is defined in your physics books as definition of work, I think, with force and displacement. Usually I'll have you guys look this up and give a statement about it for extra credit. You can do so with your uh, SMLs um, because uh, if you look it up, that's a research technique and I wanna give you credit towards, you know, really participating on this assignment. So <clears throat> I might ask that at the end if I remember, but definition of work and displacement, I think the rest of it is at an angle. There it goes, Google's helping me out. And if you look here, you'll see theta utilized a lot, right? Let me make sure the screen is still sharing correctly. So you'll see uh, theta used excessively when you're talking about any angle introduced to the problem, right? So mathematical work can be expressed by following equation. Work, there it is, what I was looking for, what I just displayed to you, uh, equals the force times the distance times cosine theta or theta, depending upon if you're French or English, how you say that, or Spanish, I don't know. You roll your R's and R's and everybody. It, it sounds different to everybody, but this is what I'm talking about. It's a circle with a line through it. Now, a lot of students, when they watch me through things on the whiteboard, I'll write a circle, I'll write a zero with a line through it. And they'll be like, oh, what is that? And they get confused and I know this. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go back to the problem set. That's, yeah, let me close this because I keep coming back to that. And that's theta again. All right, here we go. So with that said, and this will get more complicated because I'm going to give you things where you have three angles. And then you guys had to do that, right? I'm getting you closer and closer to understanding how physics is different and unique for different applications. There are various applications. We got optics. We have acceleration. Relativity, I can't even get there yet because that's a very powerful concept in terms of understanding light. Um, waveforms or wavelengths and energy. Well, I'm working on work first because I want to get people moment, uh, motivated to do some work during this time. Keep the mind sharp so the body can follow. So let's take the equation we have, right? 
copy that and I'm gonna post this right here <clears throat> I'm gonna put it over here because honestly what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go through iterations of this problem to get the solution and we're, we're close to the end to be honest with you because I will just plug and play at this point because it's set up for you to find work as it is in the known section right mass um, but we're missing something and this is another thing I want to add we have mass but we got to find a force and if you look in our known section we don't have a force yet so how do we do that <clears throat> I said it earlier on that gravity here on earth is 9.81 meters per second squared that's gravity right but gravity if you listen to that uh, meters per second square part at the end of that 9.81 is and that's a constant the scientists that I've met at, you know, National Nuclear Security Administration or NSA, Department of Energy, and even CERN, this is just some things you gotta know, like the standard conversion from days to hours to seconds to years, so on and so forth. These are things that you can look up and just use and puzzle it together using critical thinking. So don't get frustrated when I'm giving you these values. Review the videos, cross-reference what I'm talking about, because. I'm a big fan of my, you know, I tell my son, don't believe what I say, go look it up. And that's how we build respect because there are people out here who actually still read and verify things. And those are mostly scientists. So <clears throat> we need one more value to calculate force. And why do I say that? Let's go up here. One second. I'm sorry, okay. So let's look at this. We know that force is equal or equivalent to the mass times acceleration. We have our mass, which is this number here. We have no acceleration. The problem didn't even specify it. This is very good training for ASVAB training, SAT and um, ACT if they still do it, or just your star testing. So you got to critically think through this. What can we use for acceleration if it was not given? Well, the values that were already measured by scientists, the one I mentioned earlier. So that is where gravity here on Earth, let me come down. Where's my mouse at? Here it goes. Gravity here on Earth, gravity is also known as, or AKA or equivalent to your acceleration. because that's how it's measured on Earth. Well, I want to say gravity on Earth, but I'm, I'm being long-winded. Let me see. I want to be specific. My scientific training. Because it changes. There's a whole uh, appendix in the back of your physics books, I, I know. And uh, we can look this up. But uh, let me pull it up here, too, just for verification purposes. And you, you, know, you know, I'm transparent with this physics stuff. I'm not making this stuff up. Um, gravity on Earth is, see? and I say A1 because I rounded up by, you know, two decimal places, right? So you can go through this article and understand it further against the wiki, but there's many other articles out there. And like I said earlier, you jump off a plane, you jump off a building. Uh, a lot of people want to talk about science, but uh, not many people are going to jump out of a building. They understand gravity, whether or not, you know, they like it being science or not. It, it, it keeps you alive. And it also helps you understand what happens when we have projectile motion, we have particles colliding at CERN, so on and so forth. So just kind of have that in the back of your mind as a scientist, a citizen scientist, that that's what we've measured gravity here to be. And that's how we measure how much force is going to be attracted to you if you do something crazy, right? So let's switch back to the problem. And like we said, since it's also an acceleration, so you don't get confused because I'm using this calculation here, force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Um, we know that to be our 9.81, and this is going to be our meters per second. Raise that to the power of two squared, okay? Now, we begin to now to calculate
not hours, but the work done on this system. So what do we got? Well, I gave you the original equation, but we had to step back for a second and now calculate our force before we can do that, right? Because we got our theta, we got um, our distance, and we got our mass, but we had to figure out what our acceleration was, and that's gravity. So let's begin. Force, not fierce, force is equivalent to, what do we say? I'm not going to retype all that. This here, right? <clears throat> and that's this. So let's plug everything in. We know force, let's say F for force, is equivalent to the mass, which we were given, and that is our number here in our known values. Okay. <clears throat> Put that in parentheses because that's all one unit that's going to be product or multiplied into another unit. So multiplied by, and what do we say? Our acceleration, which is this pretty much unit here, it's all together. Okay. Now, if you remember from the last lecture or the last video, uh, when you take kilograms and acceleration or mass per, uh, I'm sorry, meters per second squared and combine them uh, is technically known in mathematics as uh, Newtons, right? So let me convert it to what you should punch into Google. And that's gonna be the force is equivalent to, that's 5,000, so we put in parentheses here, 782 multiplied by our 9.81 and this combines or joins forces to make Newton. All right, so we get that out the way. Okay. So let me see, set this up for you. It's gonna be our force is equivalent to what is it? We get this number right here. We're gonna take our quick calculator in Google. And we'll come here to a new tab and put that right there. <clears throat> we end up with what? Jeez Louise, that is a lot of force. So we just take this entire number because it has the least the two digits I was talking about. You only need two decimal places after that decimal, so that's a four two. And, and you know, you can round it up if there's a number after that two that was higher than five, and it'd be four three. So I'm gonna put that there, and this is our Newtons. Okay. Uh, let's just clean that up a bit. Okay, cool. Now, we have what we need to begin working on the next part of our equation, which is the work done when you have an angle involved. So I'm gonna, you know, make it our work called W and make that equal to, well, let's put everything into perspective. We have everything else, right? Because now we have this number here, which is the force I was alluding to earlier in your problem, right? So we got mass, distance, the angle. We use gravity already, and that was to get force. So let's go ahead and just finish this problem off. So that'll be, if I'm typing it up correctly, um, our value we calculated, so that's 56. I'm gonna copy that because it's gonna um, bring the underline with it. 71.42, and uh, this is measured in Newtons. And it's gonna be multiplied by, I'm just following the equation above, our distance. Well, what is that? That's our 15.2 meters. And there's no conversions because it's in meters, it's not in centimeters, kilometers, and all that. And lastly, we have our calculation in trigon uh, trigonometry uh, in terms of cosine. Now in trig, you got cosine, sine, and tan, and we can get further into that if you did calculus with me, or trigonometry. But this is for the purpose of just pure algebra and a little bit of angle understanding, because if you're going into robotics or you're going to computer science, you have to understand where zero starts on a Cartesian grid system, 90, 
180, 270, and then back to 360 in terms of understanding Rene Descartes' Cartesian grid system. That's built into the mathematics of our computer science and uh, engineering, CT, or robotics classes. So <clears throat> that's cosine. And I'm going to plug in theta here. And our theta, if you look above, is 68.2 degrees. So what next? Well, let's consolidate all this. I'm going to take all the dimensions and make them form like Voltron. I'm kind of telling my age right there, but um, that's going to work. And we're going to take the values from earlier, but we're going to remove everything else that has combined already before we do our calculation. So if I plug that in, we're going to take out, let's see here, this is degrees. This should be double bracketed because that's one function. And uh, I'm going to take out, like I said, uh, the degrees, right? Well, I'm not going to take the degrees. I'm going to take out the other dimensions. This is going to become dimensionless, the cosine part. So I'm going to take out the meters. I'm going to take out the Newtons. So they already made our joules, right? And like I said, this is going to become joules here. And what does it look like when you calculate it, right? So if I wanted to put that in Google, what would I put, Mr. Tyler? All right. So work is equal to, I'm going to take these values again. I'm just going through steps and how I want you to show all your steps too. So what is that? Well, in Google, you got to type costs. I think that's how it works. And then the rest of it should work. So let me take this part. And it's cost is for the cosine because, you know, you read the book, it says cosine. If you type in computer science, it might be cost, sine, tan, which means cosine, sine, and tangent. But I digress. So let's go through it. I'm going to take this calculation. Go back to Google Calculator, and we get what? It looks like there's great machines in your search. That didn't work out for me. Okay, so let's see. Oh, the degrees part. I should have took that out and take that out in the solution, too. So let's do that. And now what do you say? It's still the same thing. Jeez Louise. All right, so I got to do this the hard way, it looks like. So boom, boom. Yeah, let's use Symbolamp. That's what I was worried about. And I mentioned that earlier. So if you type in symbol lab with um, your new tab, it should handle the trig functions well. And I tested this out. Yeah, cosine is used here pretty well. So again, what was our values? Let me go back. That's going to be up until here. Come here, mouse. My mouse is acting stupid. I got to get a new one. Copy this part, plug that part in, and then I want, if you expand it, I think, no, full pad, there we go. That's how you do it in here, and we click on cosine, and our angle again was what? I forget, I think it's 68.2? Yeah, my memory serves me right. So, I'll take this out of here. And I'm going to say, hey, work. And as a note, I'm going to tell you guys uh, uh, this step. Now utilize uh, Symbolab online to calculate. Google gave me a bit of a hang up there. Work. Answer. And if we do that, it's 68.2. So 68.2. And I hit enter, and I should get a better result now, right? I sure do. So if we're looking at it, our final answer is this. I'm trying to see if it gives us a decimal value. This is going through the steps and calculus. I enjoy that, but I want you to stay in this area. So what does the answer become? All right? And show full steps. It still didn't show me the full and final answer. That sucks. All right, so I'm going to toy around with this but because I don't have my own calculator on me. I wonder if I can do it on my cell phone. But if you get 
you know, to the part where you set it up and you try to calculate it, I'll give you full credit because I'm trying to figure out why it's not giving me all this, the, the, the decimal value. If I do it in steps, I know I can though, but hold on. Give me one second to, to really resolve this for you. So that's gonna be, what is cos of 68.2? I think that's the hang up. And there we go, that's what I needed. All right, so uh, let's say that's about 0 0.37, right? So come here, that'll be uh, this value here, multiplied by our 0 0.37, I thought I pressed the decimal. And uh, to get you a clean answer, just figure that out real quick for you. I'm gonna come back here and instead of playing with that, do that. Because we're getting the complicated math a bit. There we go. <clears throat> so that's a lot of work. And you gotta bear in mind is the application problem. So we're gonna say two seven at the end of this number. And then I'll work is equal to this at two seven. How do we say that number? That's like a, that's a lot of work because if we're talking about this is in joules, right? If we're talking about a boat, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is a lot of force. A boat could crush a person. So how do we say that number? It's three digits here. It's three hundred nineteen thousand and one point two seven joules. And that is our final answer. That is the end of the problem. I'm gonna try to highlight these two, uh, the two solutions you needed. And then note that in your unknown section, because again, like we did yesterday, you had to also find the force. Okay, I did that wrong, there we go. It's equivalent to some number we already calculated in Newton's. Okay. Now, I want to make a quick note before I end this and send the recording out. I tried to wait for students to come in. No one showed up. Fine. But I do know you guys are responding on Edsby because you review the videos. I download to Edsby and I'm seeing assignments being posted. So that I'm seeing there's some understanding. Uh, and that's a great thing. That's for momentum. But uh, moving forward, please stop like doing some of the steps and not all the steps. Please stop also submitting just the answers I perform from you. I have to say in my opinion, that's being a bit lazy and mediocre. I need you to do all the steps I did because the more you do it, the more it becomes muscle memory and it's at your fingertips and you're not last minute trying to figure out or have a deer in a headlight look like, how do I do this? Especially when my quizzes pop up, okay? And I will be distributing those. I'm trying to give you time to catch up all this week on topics I already covered, okay? So go in, I posted today's due now, you have until 8 p.m. to finish it. Take your time. You got questions. Review this video with your parent or parents or guardian, whomever, and try to submit a decent report. Now, how do you submit a report? Here's how. You click on file here, and a couple of students have done this, but they didn't know how simple it was. Click on file in your Google Doc, which is why I use it, and go to download, click on PDF. Once you do that, it'll generate a PDF. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to pop. There it goes. I don't know if you saw that, but it's down here. And when you click on your show and folder, you'll be able to identify where it is exactly. And you see my title was necessary because it is, but then you also uh, want to take this file and place it into your ESB student portal. Again, that looks like, uh, if I go back here to the file, you're gonna go to the part, because I made sure it's a file upload, where you will click on browse your computer and file that fi find that file name that you downloaded. You select that in your directory. That's why I wanted you to name your document. And then you will hit uh, upload. It says save on my screen because I'm a teacher, but you'll, you'll, send, you'll hit, click on that button for upload. It'll take a little process. It'll send, and then boom, I will see it in the gray book. Now, this procedure is a little different for those of you using cell phones. You can do the same thing. Only thing is, you will have to write down the solution. 
and then take a picture and then send that file to ASB, okay? So I hope this helps. If you have questions or concerns, reach out to me, ASB. You guys stay safe out there and well. Uh, try not to go outside. Try to keep your mind sharp. Try to stay active, but inside. Uh, if you understand how biology works, we can only get control of this if we actually follow what the CDC and the World Health Organization says. All right? Stay well. And Zen.